quickly move to the most young looking speaker uh, mr hunkar jani he is not all that young let me tell you he has immense experience he may be he looks small but he has a beautiful experience jani uh, uh, in fact we have been together uh, we know each other for a very very long time now years not to be counted uh, good afternoon and uh, sir thank you for the introduction sir uh, always a pleasure and uh, thank you for inviting me uh, i was researching on this topic uh, it's it's relatively a new topic for me because i was mainly focused into solar and lately I've, i'm trying to diversify uh, and uh, sir what as you said early on that when we talk about green skilling it turns out that in the future and that's what my research is kind of pointing towards pretty much all of skills will have to be somehow or the other green right in fact uh, sandeep if i may the portal that you showed for gujarat was ultimately developed by it professionals who had no clue what solar was right so now last week and this is an interesting story i would like to share with you so i have two daughters one is 6 years old and the other is 8 years old i'm doing my research on skilling and i'm constantly in the back of my mind i am wondering what are my kids studying are these subjects even relevant or not i mean too much information sometimes confuses you so uh, the mother walks in and says uh, none of them have done their homework for tomorrow so i turn to the elder one and i say you know uh, pavi you need to write writing is important and she replies saying daddy i have never seen you write you always type theek hai fine <laughs> off to bed i go to the younger one and said you know uh, what about your homework the so first i don't have homework it's not due tomorrow so i said yana i'm going to ask you one question do you have homework tomorrow or not and she said yes i have homework so i said then why didn't you do it she says daddy your one question is over <laughs> right so and that's when you realize that it's it's, it's all about smartness and how you can actually uh you know address a, a situation right away coming back to my research this is what i'm realizing uh and this is again i'm going a bit more abstract because i realized that to find green skills specifically was turning out to be a problem for me so uh, i said what are the drivers for change and you know where are the jobs going so one major driver is the technological change you know the automation ai we all talk about communication people's anxiousness about job security also there is a demographic uh, demographic change also india is a bit different the rest of the world is a bit different but everybody has their own needs they have their own priority so that would be another driver globalization is there uh, there are integration of markets knowledge is being shared there is also uh, a sense of protectionism that is going on environmental sustainability we all know uh fossil fuels weather conditions water shortages urbanization was also mentioned people are moving to cities that will have its own infrastructure and social challenges political uncertainty there is a change in global powers from the west to the developing countries to some extent uh, there is also a policy short sightedness uh, if you're from the solar industry you do know this you experienced this in the last 1 uh, to 2 years and policies might not necessarily keep up with technological changes there is an increasing inequality and i'm while i'm not convinced of this this is what is being told and to some extent it does make sense that the you know income and wealth uh, is uh, the inequality is seen lately uh, the middle class is being uh, squeezed so uh, it will have a lot of ramifications in terms of disparities so these are broadly your drivers of change which brought me to my next question that the jobs for the future do they need to be highly specialized or do, do they have to be interdisciplinary general in nature so what do i skill my kids with so arguments a highly specialized would be an entrepreneur who is really the domain expert right 
On the other, a, a general skill would be somebody who is a risk taker, risk taker, who doesn't understand the knowledge uh, domain, jumps into a sector, says, I'll figure out how it's done. And we have seen many success stories, many successful business entrepreneurs who have actually been successful this way. Similarly, something specialized would be highly you know, uh, skilled in design and innovation versus somebody who is just creative. Highly specialized would be somebody with digital skills. On the other hand, it would be somebody with just the knowledge of how to process information and how to sort it efficiently. One would be sector-specific skills. The other would be just basic engineering. If I know my civil, if I know my electrical, if I know my little bit of computers, if I know my Excel, give me a project, I'll do it for you. Cross-sectoral skills, if you want to do something beyond. On the other hand, you might just be a good manager with good communication skills and good teamwork. You can still probably manage it. Technical problem solving versus just simple attitude and logic. That could also solve the problem. One is you want to meet specialized objectives. What is you know, taking you at a particular direction? What is giving you a direction? On the other hand, I already have a direction which is driven by values. So I do have a job anyways. Right, so this was a basic split that I actually came across. I don't have an answer, but I just wanted to show this to you. So then broadly, I said you can classify this into a homogeneous set of activities, which are mainly repetitive in nature, which ultimately you, you would think that a machine can do very well, which is something very simple. It's, it's, a, it's a manufacturing or a, or a production uh, kind of an activity, versus something which is heterogeneous, which requires a bunch of skill sets, more than one, which might be difficult for a machine to do. It turns out that there's a constant migration happening. What I think is complicated today might be simple tomorrow for a machine to do, right? Classic example, a couple of years back, we were designing a PV system by hand. Uh, we would really do a lot of calculations to figure out what the yield would be. You use NASA data, you use geometries. You would do site surveys. In fact, site surveys are also happening today for how to install a solar rooftop system. It turns out that there are a good amount of software available, that it pulls data readily from databases of NASA. And the last thing that we have done about a month back is we actually used drones to survey houses and figure out how, many, how much uh, rooftop solar can you do on them. So we are practically eliminating our own skill sets to develop new ones. However, there were some things which we could not find a substitute for. One is team recruitment, way to get good recruiters, good HR kind of a job. Second is planning, where again, it is very human intensive. You have to talk to people. Management, construction management. You have all sorts of new problems de dealing, uh, you have to deal with on the field. There is some clearance required here. The laborers didn't come. Somebody was doing firefighting. So these were the jobs I felt were kind of hard for a robot or, or somebody to automate. Again, breaking it down one step more in detail, what do we do, right? Or, or any process, what happens in a process? One is there is raw material. In the future, what are the three raw material you would actually need? One is the, the material itself, raw material, right? It, it could be metal or it could be wood or anything. The second is energy. You will require energy to run something. And the third is data. And the data could be something where even uh, a, a robot could be operating a patient, and you still need your raw material. You need your electricity. And you need that data where ultimately the, uh, the computer has probably intelligently figured out that what is this patient's condition, how, how, how they've diagnosed the condition, and how do I operate it, right? So these are pretty much the three raw materials which, which will be required. The process can be either a physical process or an intellectual process. I couldn't think of a third one. And the output you get is pretty much a product or a service. So this is what we could ultimately break it down to. 
and broadly, it turns out that the homogeneous activities would be where you would require global solutions. It's something which, which uh, a solution I can apply here. I could apply in Japan. I could apply in the West somewhere. So those are the global uh, learnings that we develop. On the other end, the heterogeneous activities would require more of localized solutions, local troubleshooting. Uh, it would require more of human touch also. There's a huge psychological uh, factor in this also. And we ultimately, we are humans. We need to be connected to the Earth. And we need humans around us. We need to be interacting with them. So skills, what we look at is, on one hand, would be highly local and highly specialized. There would be clearly defined battery limits. So for example, an, an electrician who comes to my house and, and wires an air condition is something where I really value the skill very clearly define what this person does, and highly repetitive in nature, that's what they are going to keep on doing. That is one. But they also have to be consistently agile, because at the battery limits, they are constantly getting in touch with newer equipment, probably. On the other hand, the aptitude would be more broad. There would be a global uh, outreach. It would be more cross-sectoral. They will have to Con consistently comprehend complexity. While on the other hand, the skilled person might not have to comprehend complexity, but the person who's dealing on the aptitude side, the more generalized uh, individual, will have to figure out how do I deal with skills, how do I deal with uh, a more complex pool of knowledge. So I'll conclude. Uh, jobs are cornerstones to our economic and social lives. They will stay. Because one of the hypotheses we were actually thinking is, are jobs going to stay or not? And there is a school of thought which says there might not be much jobs. There will be only a handful of jobs. The rest of the people will be living off government money. right? So never say never. Uh, AI and automation are inevitable, which will transform jobs. Current technological changes will disrupt employment levels. But I would not bet on what is going to happen, because experts have always been wrong. Uh, human touch will always be required. And going further, I think values need to be key, what guides us. Investment in skills, of course, must be at the center of any long-term strategy, uh, should be acknowledged by individuals, businesses, and policymakers. So while we don't have an answer, we do have a direction. And I think that is what we should appreciate. Thank you. <laughs>